This program was brought to you by Organo Gold. Organo Gold is a health and wellness company that provides healthy coffees, teas, and chocolate. All one has to do is consume the available products to get all the available benefits. One can also share these products with others to help them improve their health as well. For more information, call 703-359-5642 or visit the website basillamba.com. And now, Fairfax Breakfast Club with your host, Basil Lemba. Welcome to the Fairfax Breakfast Club show. My name is Basil Lemba and I will be your host. The Fairfax Breakfast Club is a weekly program in which we bring to you valuable and workable know-how you can use to improve your networking skills and grow your business. We always start the show with a quote. And today's quote is, to be successful in real estate, you must always and consistently put your client's best interest first. When you do, your personal needs will be realized beyond your greatest expectation. And that is from Anthony Heath. With us today at the studio, we have a real estate agent, and I must ask, I must add, a very successful one. Her name's Jennifer Mack. Hello, Jennifer. Hello, Basile. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. We finally succeeded in getting her over here. It took a probe, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a busy girl. What can I say? <laughs> so tell us, how did you get into real estate? Uh, I got into real estate about nine years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to being a realtor, I was in the high-tech software industry in Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. And I did that um, after graduate school for about five or six years. And then uh, my husband had a job change. We ended up in North Carolina where mm -hmm. there were no software companies close to us. And mm -hmm. so I had always thought about going into real estate and I decided that that was the perfect time to take the plunge and uh, went to class and got my little certificate and then that was about nine years ago. So it was a great decision. <laughs> good, good. So I'm, I'm thinking that you're enjoying it. Oh, I love it. I love my job. Yes, that's, that's my tagline. I love my job. It's, it's fabulous. No, it's been a very good fit for me. Mm -hmm. um, the, the flexibility, mm -hmm. um, I love working with people. I love learning new things every day. Mm -hmm. And that's really what real estate is. You know, you, you are never doing the same thing over and over again. You're always learning something new, mm -hmm. meeting new people. Um, it's just been a wonderful career for me. Okay. I love it. I can't imagine myself doing anything else. Oh, really? Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So you do mainly residential? I do. I, I've chosen to concentrate on residential. I don't think we can be all things to all people. So mm -hmm. uh, what I do... Um, is I partner with some people on the commercial side, but yes, I've chosen to have my focus be residential, and I'm right about 60% listings and 40% buyers right now, and that mix fluctuates some, but um, I would never want to just work with, with sellers or just work with buyers. I think that it's really important to work with both so that you can always uh, keep in mind the perspective of the other side, and mm -hmm. I think that it makes me a better agent, the fact that I do work on both sides and do understand both of those perspectives. Okay. So, so yeah, I like to work with both sides. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Somebody want to buy a house. Mm -hmm. What would you advise to that person? Well, let's um, say somebody, yeah, what, what would you, yes, let's say somebody want to buy a house. How would you advise them? What would you suggest? To them. For the steps to go through for mm -hmm. the process? Mm -hmm. um, well, of course, first I would want them to meet with me so that I could give them an overview <clears throat> of what the process looks like. I find that most buyers, especially if it's their first time, they're very, very overwhelmed. They've made up a story in their head of how complicated it's going to be oh, really? and how confusing it's going to be and how expensive it's going to be and how time consuming it's going to be. And I think that that's causes a lot of people a lot of hesitation just to make that first phone call to a, a real estate agent to get the, pro the ball rolling. Okay, why is that? Why do you think they, they are in that state of mind? Well, I think that they um, hear sometimes a lot of horror stories from mm -hmm. friends and family and coworkers because unfortunately not everybody does have a good experience. Mm -hmm. 
And so they, they do hear that. Um, you know, obviously we do live in one of the more expensive housing markets in the in the country, mm -hmm. and so a lot of people have hesitation about whether they're going to be able to afford the kind of home that they want, and they're scared to, to really find out what those numbers look like. Um, and they just have a lot of questions, and they're just not quite sure how to approach all of it. So I find that usually after my first meeting uh, with buyers, even just an hour or an hour and a half goes a really long way towards um, eliminating a lot of that hesitation and fear. And they walk out of the meeting the exact opposite of how they walked in. They walk out really excited, mm -hmm. and they're eager to get started because I've explained to them how I'm really going to be their partner okay. through the process, mm -hmm. and I'm going to make things easier for them mm -hmm. instead of harder, mm -hmm. and um, explain to them how all of my experience is going to benefit them in mm -hmm. terms of not having a lot of pitfalls throughout the transaction and that things are going to go really smoothly. Okay. Um, so that first meeting goes a long way towards that. And then after that, the next step is always to, if, if they're not going to be paying cash, which in our market, um, about 10% of transactions are cash. The rest mm -hmm. of buyers need to, need to get some financing. What do you mean by cash? They pay for the whole thing? Mm -hmm. Right. So a lot of in, we have a lot of investors in this area, oh, okay. Okay. or people who have just saved up all their money. You know, they've they've really socked it away for many years um, to be able to purchase a home with cash. Um, the other 90% are getting some kind of financing, and sure. so that's another way that I can really help them out is through the connections that I have with local lenders who I know and trust and who have a vested interest in making me happy and in turn the client happy. Okay. And they're people who provide, um, number one, really great customer service, mm -hmm. and number two, really fabulous rates and great products that um, are going to meet everyone's needs. Okay. And that's the next step. And then once they get connected with the lender, then it's the fun part. Then we get to go look at houses. Okay. Gotcha. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you see as being the challenges in those different steps? What are you running into? Um, on the financing side, uh, the lender is going to do sort of a reality check with buyers to ensure that they can qualify for the purchase. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's going to involve, of course, checking their credit, mm -hmm. looking at their ratios to see what their debt to income situation is, mm -hmm. to be sure that, that they can qualify for a type of financing and that their payment is going to be something that they're going to be comfortable with. I mm -hmm. never want anybody to buy more house than what they really should be buying. Mm -hmm. I want everyone to be comfortable with their payment and on a monthly basis, you know, when your mortgage statement comes to feel good about what that payment is and mm -hmm. to not have it be something that's stressful or overwhelming, we're gonna always work hard to find a property that's gonna be a really good match in that way. Mm -hmm. So I would say that the financing for some people can be a hurdle. And sometimes if I have clients that meet with a lender and maybe they decide that right then there is not the best time for mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. to purchase for whatever reason, mm -hmm. The lender will work with them, and I will work with them for 12 months or 18 months, or I've worked with clients for two years before, while they're renting or staying with family, to get them to a position where they can buy, and it's a reality for them, mm -hmm. and they can qualify for a good interest rate and have a payment that works for them. So it's really important that buyers know that you know they need to be partnering with somebody who really is in it for the long haul with them, mm -hmm. both on the lending side and on the real estate side. Okay. Um, but if we can get past that challenge, then um, the rest of it is should be pretty easy mm -hmm. if I'm doing my job right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. How is the inventory these days? Is there a lot of houses on market? We have very very low inventory right now um, in most price ranges. In some of the higher price ranges, mm -hmm. we do have ample inventory. Um, but right now, there's a statistic that realtors look at, and it's called an absorption rate. And what absorption rate it means is if no more houses were to go on the market after today, mm -hmm. how much of a supply of inventory do we have? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in Fairfax County, that number is only about one and a half months supply. So if no more houses came on the market, to starting today, after another six weeks, there will be no houses left, okay? Mm -hmm. That means that we're in a seller's market, all right? In a healthy market, we want about six months supply of houses, and we're all the way down at, one and a, at only one and a half months, okay? So we're very clearly in a seller's market right now. 
um, inventory is very low. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say that a buyer can't find a house. You know, that's not correct mm -hmm. at all. It depends, obviously, on what your price range is, what type of home you're looking for, where you're looking, uh, what is your tolerance for um, uh, upkeep on the house and condition of the house. You know, mm -hmm. some people really want a turnkey property. Mm -hmm. Other people are fine with more of a fixer-upper. They feel that they can take that on and that's not something that's overwhelming for them. Um, really though, the important thing there on, on the buying side with that low of inventory is partnering with a real estate agent who has techniques to get your offer approved if you're in a multiple offer situation because that's what we're seeing so often now mm -hmm. is what we call a multiple offer situation where you see a house, you like it, you mm -hmm. want to write an offer mm -hmm. and you think I'm going to present the offer and the seller's going to accept it. But in a multiple offer situation, we may have two, four, six, ten buyers that all want the same house. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the seller is going to be sitting down with all of these offers and what you have put in your offer to differentiate yourself from other buyers is what's going to determine whether or not your offer is accepted. So that mm -hmm. is where partnering with somebody who really knows what they're doing is very, very important or else you will write offer after offer after offer oh, and they, none of them will be accepted and you'll be very frustrated as you can probably imagine. I see. Okay. So. Okay. I understand. Okay. Now let's say you want to sell. Mm -hmm. What would mm -hmm. you advise to mm -hmm. somebody who want to sell? Well, a lot of people think that since there is such limited inventory mm -hmm. that they can just hire anybody to put a sign in their yard and, and so put their listing on MLS and that the house is going to sell right away. And I don't believe that that's true. I think that even though inventory is really low, buyers are still wanting to see homes in top showing condition. So I think that what's important there is getting really good advice as far as staging of your property. And what staging means is um, either if your home is vacant, maybe getting some furniture to put in it, and we can do that in some really low cost mm -hmm. ways. Or if your home is occupied, maybe moving out some of the excess furniture, decluttering, taking down personal pictures. Um, taking down personal pictures? <laughs> yeah, what do you mean? Yeah, I, mean, I know like... that sounds strange, but when a buyer comes into your house to look at it, mm -hmm. We don't want them to be distracted by the pictures you have on the wall oh, or all the books you have in your bookshelf. You want the buyer to walk in and just be imagining themselves in oh. your home. And that's very hard to do if there's pictures of the grandkids everywhere, you know, plastering the entire house and you've got a lot of collections of things all over the place, you know, which may be beautiful, but it's distracting the buyers. Okay, are you saying that you're gonna make it maybe, uh, maybe the correct will be impersonal? Right, right. Is that what, that's what yeah, you're trying not, to say? And, but not totally stripped down, and I think that's where there's kind of a science to it. We okay. wanna have a good gotcha. balance. We, mm -hmm. want, we definitely want to have things that are interesting and pretty to look at, mm -hmm. but we don't want it to be too personal. Okay. So what I do, uh, just yesterday I was at a home for a couple hours. We walked through every room. We talked about all of the items in the room. We talked about lighting and what was important to leave, what was important to take um, to really show the house off to its best advantage. Okay. Um, so staging is very important. Pricing is very, very important. You know, a lot of sellers in this market think, oh, it's a seller's market. I'm just going to put a really, really high price on my house and I'm going to get that right away. How about the comps, comparative price? Right, you price have to look at the, okay. the comparables. Mm -hmm. And the goal is to get as many people through your house as possible, mm -hmm. as quickly as we can under it go, as soon as it goes on the market. That's the goal. So the why way, is that a goal? The, way that we, the reason why that's a goal is because buyers are now very savvy. Buyers have access to almost all the in same information oh. that realtors have access okay. to. Gotcha. And one of the things that buyers look at is a little statistic called days on market. Okay? <laughs> buyers can go into all these different websites mm -hmm. and they can see how long your house has been on the market. If a buyer is looking at your house online and they see that it's been on the market for 45 or 60 or 90 days, what do you think they're going to think to themselves? There's something wrong with it. There's something wrong with it. And they're going to discount it. Okay, nine out of 10 buyers are gonna discount it. If they do come to see it, 
they're not going to pay full price. They're immediately going to take a certain percentage in their head off the price because they think, well, in this market, if it's, if it's been sitting for 60 days, it must not be worth its list price. And it's probably not, OK? <laughs> so the key thing is to price it accurately. We want it to be an attractive price, not too low, mm -hmm. but a fair, attractive price based on the comparables. Mm -hmm. This is what's going to draw a lot of traffic into the house in that first four, five, six days that it's on the market. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be able to possibly drive the price up a little bit mm -hmm. from the list price. There's nothing that says we can't go above list price. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very important to price accurately. And that's one of the things that I specialize in guiding sellers in is together sitting down and really analyzing exactly what the price should be so that we have the best advantage when we go on the market. Okay. So staging and price and then of course exposure to the market mm -hmm. is very, very important. So all of the different websites you know, to advertise on. Um, professional pictures, videography, mm -hmm. um, the open houses, you know, are very important towards driving exposure to the house. Mm -hmm. You know, internet especially now is so important. We have a lot of people who buy houses without actually even going in them, if you can believe that. Yeah, no, I have they're that. really they're risk takers, you know. <laughs> and they're we also have that. people out of state who do that, don't they? Exactly. There's people out of state. We have a lot of military in our area. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason it's not um, it's not practical for them to get to the house in person. So they would you say would you say it's risky or I guess it's risky yeah because the risk you take it is risky. What if you don't see there's a f f cracks on the foundation, the basement, or what have you? you don't. Well, I mean, guess maybe the you'd still have your home inspection, you know. Okay, I guess. Yeah, you'd okay. still have your home yeah. inspection. Yeah. But yeah. the point is, we want to um, have as much exposure of the property as possible. Okay. So you know, it needs to be everybody needs to know about that house once it goes on the market, and. Um, if they have the proper exposure, if it's properly staged, and we, if we have the right price, uh -huh. we should be able to attract good offers in a short amount of time. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So would you say that that's the service that you provide then as a realtor? Absolutely. Knowing how to put it out there properly so it can be sold rapidly. Right. Or also knowing how to put the proper offer so it can qualify and get the house. Mm -hmm. Right. So part of what I do is I really scrutinize the offers that come in call and interview the lender that mm -hmm. the buyer has to make sure that the buyer has a viable position as far as getting their loan approval and getting to closing. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of homework on every offer that comes in so that I can really effectively advise the seller on which is the best offer to pick. Ultimately, it's the seller's decision, but mm -hmm. it's my job to make the recommendation to them mm -hmm. for which is the best offer to accept. Um, and then you know that that negotiation is so important that that's really what i'm paid for you know to be a professional negotiator to make sure meaning, to make sure meaning that everybody get the price right that the buyer get his price or when you're listing making sure the person listing get their price right and when the offers start coming in even if it's a great offer it's my job to say how can we how can we make this even better in terms of when we counter back to them what, how can we make every single term in this offer as attractive to my seller as possible? And then when I'm on the other side with my buyers, it's how do it I make every term? You're no different from a lawyer. Basically. basically <laughs> no, just kidding. Basically. basically. <laughs> Remind me of a story. This is a joke. <laughs> of a lawyer who's in court and then he said to the judge, well, judge, well, he's not guilty because Mr. And then the judge said, well, yesterday you said it was okay. Right. <laughs> right. No, my husband's an attorney. I leave that to him. <laughs> but, but the negotiation part, I can absolutely do. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> okay, that's, yeah. that's fundamental because in, in any case, uh, that's your job. You do that day in, day out. Mm -hmm. And the customer does not do that day in, day out. There are things they don't know. Absolutely. Uh, they have no clue. And then, uh, well, that's the service, the service that they pay for. Mm -hmm. That's correct. That's correct. And then the next part of it, you know, after getting the offer negotiated and accepted is, seeing it through, it's called, we call it contracts to close, okay? So mm -hmm. all these contingencies have to be then lifted. So the appraisal and the financing and the home inspection, and it's my job to keep on top of all of those dates okay. and to know that nothing's falling through the cracks mm -hmm. because um, you can get a great offer all day long, but if it doesn't go to closing, it does you no good. Uh -huh, you know, we need to get to closing successfully uh -huh. and the seller needs to get their proceeds in a timely manner and it needs to be, um, 
as stress-free and not have a lot of delays mm -hmm. and, and definitely not have any fall through. And so part of what I do is have a very, very low level of contract fall through mm -hmm. because I am on top of all of those dates and inspections and calling the buyer's lender every week to make mm -hmm. sure that everything's on track and all of that. Okay. You know, it's my job to not leave anything to chance and um, to make sure that the seller is not up at night worrying about these things. Uh -huh. that's, that's my job, that's what I get paid for. So okay. I wanna make sure that they're not, that they have no concerns. Okay. And keeping them in the loop is very important too. Communication yeah. is so yeah, important I imagine. with sellers. They wanna hear so from me on mm -hmm. a, two to three times a week. They wanna hear from me to know, you know what's the latest and what's the status and all of that. And um, so communication is something that um, I place a lot of importance on for my clients, okay. for sure. Very good. Now let's turn on to some other subject, mm -hmm. the Breakfast Club. Yes. You have been attending it. Tell the audience your experience about it. How do you like it? Oh, I love the Breakfast Club. I love it so much I decided to become a, a patron. sponsor. Yeah. Yes, a patron sponsor. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> No, I think that um, the the forum of the Breakfast Club, with you know the the order that we go in, is very beneficial to the participants. With mm -hmm. the open networking at the beginning, having some education and a spotlight on a certain um, participant in mm -hmm. midway through, and then at the end, really getting the chance to sit down one on one mm -hmm. with that many people. Even even though it's a short period of time, I think you can get a lot accomplished towards establishing a personal connection mm -hmm. in just that short amount of time um, in the in the breakfast club and then what's great is you know you see the same people every month and you can really start forming relationships uh, yeah. set up one-to-one -one meetings with them outside mm -hmm. of the breakfast club to mm -hmm. get to know them even better and then see them again the next month um, you know can really cultivate some some good relationships so I found it to be very valuable I highly recommend for any business person to to take advantage of, of coming to an event. You do a great job. I try to. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And also you got a chance, uh, even though you're helping us at the last expo. Yes. Tell, tell them, talk to us a bit about the expo, your experience at the expo. Um, well, you, you were nice enough to um, ask me to come and attend the expo, and I took it a step further and volunteered at the front desk. Mm -hmm. So I was the, the first person this that is. everybody <laughs> saw when they came in to sign up. Mm -hmm. and got to um, answer questions that the vendors had about uh -huh. what they needed to do and where they needed to be and all of that. Uh -huh. And um, you know, it was just amazing, the energy that was in the room, uh -huh. all of the people that were there. Um, I think the informational sessions were very, very valuable. Uh -huh. um, I know I snuck away for a couple of them, left, left my duties at the front desk <laughs> so that I could go listen in uh -huh. on the speakers. And um, I've got the December Expo in my calendar and I'm very, very excited to attend again okay. here coming up in a couple of months. Yes, December 6th. Yes, yeah. December 6th. I've got it. It's a Friday, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, no, I think it's I think it's great. I think that um it's it's a very unique event mm -hmm. and it just really fosters having a lot of one-on-one -on -one time being able to go around and just really talk to people in a setting where you're not rushed and you can really get to know them. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course, like I said, that the, the educational sessions sprinkled in. It's just a good back and forth mm -hmm. um, mix to the event. So mm -hmm. I think it's very well done. Okay, I look you. forward to attending many more. We're looking forward to it as well. <laughs> <laughs> now I have a question for you. What would you consider your biggest success in life? My biggest success in life, mm -hmm. um, being able to live out my passion of helping others on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. You know, I just feel uh, very happy that I've been able to find a profession where I can do that. I think that we all exist to serve others. Mm -hmm. And when I can do that in a meaningful way mm -hmm. and bring value to people's lives mm -hmm. on a daily basis, whether it's through real estate or other interactions that I'm having with people, mm -hmm on a daily basis. I think that that, that is, for me, that's, that's what makes me get out of bed in the morning. That's mm -hmm. what makes me happy. Makes you know, sense. being able to really help people. Um, and I try to just you know, do that in as honorable of a way as I can with, with integrity and, and honesty every day. And um, that's just hugely important for me that I get to do that. Okay. And so luckily I have a career where I get to do that every day. That's what I do. Very good, very so, good. Excellent. Actually, great. probably I'll ask you this before, but what would you consider the biggest challenge in life? My biggest challenge? Mm -hmm. 
Well, I am a mother. I'm a working mother. Mm -hmm. So um, I've got two little ones. I've got a five-year-old daughter and, a, and an 18-month-old son. Mm -hmm. And so balance, of course, mm -hmm. is my biggest challenge. And I think a lot of business people struggle with that. Mm -hmm. um, we want to be successful in our careers, but we really the most important thing is, is having a successful family life. Absolutely. So, uh, that's one of the reasons why I chose real estate, and I would encourage um, mothers in cir similar circumstances to consider real estate. Mm -hmm. It's a great career for those who need some flexibility. Mm -hmm. So for example, most every Saturday I'm working. So Mondays are my day home with, with my kids. Gotcha. You know, mm -hmm. And I've just made that a priority for me. Mm -hmm and it works really, really well. My clients know that they can still call me. You mm -hmm. know, I'll still answer phone calls and I still answer emails, mm -hmm. but um, I try to not set appointments on that day because I am out on Saturday, uh -huh, you know? Uh -huh, so yeah, I think um, just you have to be creative, uh -huh. um, and but you can do it. Okay. You can do it if you want to, so. Very good. Mm -hmm. Well, I thank you very much for coming to the show. This is, that's, that's fantastic. See, it was not that uh, complicated. No, no. Thank you for having me. <laughs> My pleasure. Folks, I want to let you know our next breakfast event will be on October 17. Uh, I'm not sure when you'll see this show. But also, as she mentioned, we have the expo coming up on December 6 mm -hmm. from 9 to 2. We'd love to have you there. We are going to have uh, 100, close to 100 exhibitors, mm -hmm. and we're yes. expecting four to 500 business people. So you can check us, uh, check out the website, which is ultbizexpo.com. They'll put it up there, ultbizexpo.com. We definitely love to have you there. Uh, real estate is great, and I think it's fundamental if you're buying or selling to have a good agent, somebody who knows about it and somebody who cares. And I think that Jennifer is one of those persons so I strongly suggest that you give her a call. And she can give you the information you need and help you out. Okay. My name is Basil. This is The Breakfast Club Show. Thank you for having us. We're looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>